Iran's nuclear chief has condemned the latest incident at its Natanz uranium enrichment facility as an act of nuclear terrorism. Ali Akbar Saleh said the futile and desperate enemy move was aimed at blocking Iran's eye-catching nuclear progress. He called on the international community and the International Atomic Energy Agency to respond to the move. The head of the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran said the country reserves the right to take action against the masterminds, perpetrators and conspirators. On Sunday, Iran said the electricity distribution network of the Natanz facility had been affected in an incident. Israeli media have said the Mossad spy agency carried out a cyber attack against the facility. To discuss this a little bit further, I'm going to bring in Mr. Tim Anderson. He's the director with Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, who comes to you via Skype out of Sydney. Um, Tim Anderson, it's good to see you. What do you think about the latest incident? And of course, the uh, comments made by head of the Iranian uh, 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 nuclear facilities. Well, they the sabotage certainly seems consistent with the campaign that Israel has been carrying on about, um, but we don't have any details on the scale of the sabotage or to what extent uh, it's actually affected electricity supplies, for example. Uh, thankfully, there's been no loss of life, apparently. Mm -hmm. So um, with that limited information, I think it's right that people are informed about this and that Iran does reserve its rights. But on the other hand, there's also the uh, some value in discipline and restraint in these circumstances, because it may be that the Israelis are probing, uh, are trying to provoke something hmm. at a time when they fear that the Biden administration might be uh, trying to de-escalate uh, their relations with Iran. And probably they think that Iran will fall for it. Um, do you think uh, there is an impossible, I mean, like, you know, the timing, because you, you actually said it, you know, I was just going to ask you about the timing of this. How sensitive of an issue do you think this is? What course of action do you think uh, is the most prudent for Iran to take, you know, given the timing and, and given the provocation that probably the Israelis have on mind? What's the best course of action? No, I think we, those of us who don't have all the information are not really in a position to make that assessment, except to say that these sort of provocations should be logged publicly, um, the, the culprits should be identified, and uh, Iran necessarily reserves its right to respond there. But the value of discipline and restraint in these circumstances has to do with the fact that there may be a temporal factor there, that Israel is trying to provoke a confrontation and draw the U.S. in. Uh, because it fears um, some retreat of the Biden administration from from the entire region, really, and, and certainly from possibly the JCPOA. Although my opinion on the JCPOA is that I don't really think there's going to be much progress there because the U.S. has is going to have trouble backing down um, without claiming some sort of concessions there. But it, it, I think it's likely, though, that the Biden administration wants to wind down the tension somehow um, from the position that Trump established uh, last year. Uh, if we believe uh, to be true what's been said about Israel having a hand in attacks like this uh, against the Iranian nuclear facilities, uh, in line with that thought, again, uh, can we expect that with a probable uh, coming to a consensus, so, you know, as far as the JCPOA is concerned, and the U.S. and uh, Iran getting closer to somehow come to a kind of compromise, can we expect, perhaps, that there's going to be an escalation of this kind of attacks? I don't know. In some respects, it is, uh, in some respects, it's a sign of desperation on the part of Israel. And they always risk overplaying their hand in these circumstances. You know, they count on the U.S. backing them up. Mm. They count on Iran not responding uh, very powerfully and causing them some real damage. And remember, the, the colony in Palestine is quite small and all of its facilities are well identified. It's not a very hard target to hit uh, for a country which has substantial uh, ballistic missile technology. But uh, uh, so, but it's hard to say. It's, uh, it's possible that they may overplay their hand. They may try it again. I mean, the assassination of scientists was 
uh, a substantial escalation. Um, that, at that time, the Trump administration was there. Um, I think they're worried at the moment because they don't know which way the Biden administration is going to move. And uh, and I think I don't really think, as I said, that the the, the JCPOA will be resuscitated because I don't think the Biden administration is capable of doing that. But I think they do want to somehow find some sort of um, living together arrangement, some sort of compromise where they save some sort of face mm -hmm. and de-escalate. I think the, the, uh, Washington probably wants to de-escalate de in some way that leaves it claiming that it has some sort of moral victory there. So they, they probably don't appreciate all of the provocations of Israel at this stage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Tim Anderson, Director with Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney, Australia. Thanks for your time.